all favoring Team Cloud. We've heard that Nomad so far through the entirety of the season. He's been a big Team Cloud fan, boy. So there's real no surprise he's favoring hold on, them. Hold on, though. Hang on. Five on five. Hey, what's, what's going on here? Five on five before the horn and butterfly effect. This is not how you're hoping to start your tiebreakers as Andy's going to go down as well. So, all right, panel. What's, what's going on? I mean, I think you're generally pretty happy with that on poke if you're able to get a couple of quick kills. And, uh, well, like Lizard said, Len Fair, Cest, Les Outers is uh, going to be able to be there for both of them. He had to level up the time walk, but that's just fine. Uh, I, I want to call Nomad out a little bit here. You know, he said he wanted Cloud first, then Meteor, then Poke, but wasn't it him that was really uh, going to bat for Poke because of their amazing logo, which, by the way, I do agree with. Uh, we really want to see that on some some T-shirt designs and some merch out there. I don't know. I'm feeling a little bit sussy about that one. What do you reckon? Oh, that was both of them. I think it was mainly T bringing it up. And then Nomad's like, all right, you know, uh, it is pretty true. They do have a, a pretty dope logo. I also know that you're uh, you're eager to say the Faceless Void name properly, so we'll we'll give you one go at it. We'll wait until he makes a, a big impact, you know. Okay, okay, okay. We'll, we'll we'll hold on for that juicy name. So, all right, already for poke, you get a couple kills. What would the bounty rune look like? Three bounties for the boys on Radiant. So, you couldn't really ask for a better start. No, and they're going to need it because I really like this Cloud Draft overall. I think they're going to be in a super solid position to be able to win this game just because the offlane, it's good. Tiny Enigma is still one of the strongest offlane pairings you can ask for. Top lane, yeah, it might not be super great. I think if Poke are going to stand any chance, Killer needs to be enabled as much as possible. This Broodmother, there isn't any main answers to it in the super early game. You're going to need to be able to pop that Avatos combo probably into an additional stun through the likes of the black hole and well, I feel like CSJ needs to do be doing his own like brood mother brood mother ish things with being able to open up the map for team cloud as well so I'm going to be watching the brood mother with serious interest okay um. so far I think also very intrigued to see how butterfly effect is able to perform once again on the Death Prophet. He completely took over that game against LBZS. So it's, he does have some awkward matchups. I think really the important one is going to be the Shadow Demon in a game like this. The, the I did like the Shadow Demon pick. It was yes. a really good Shadow Demon pick coming through. You know, like it, it sets up for the Marana arrows and like you were just about to mention before I rudely interrupted you, the, uh, <laughs> the Demonic Purge is going to be great against the Death Prophet, right? It's They don't have any BKB piercing stuns, but it's still a slow. It's going to prevent that Death Prophet from chasing you down. Yeah, which is a big thing. I think also it can be a little bit different now because we see DP... Like, pretty much their core item build was your Scepter every game. So that was another big reason of why you like the Purge against it. But, um, of course, we really see the, sh the, the Death Prophets look to veer away from that sort of item nowadays. But another kill was picked up up top. So very great start here for the boys on Poke. They are loving life. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering when Eren is going to feel free enough to be able to go back towards his Ancients area and uh, start to stack that one up because you're playing with a Lushrak, you've got plenty of tools to be able to really skyrocket his net worth. I mean, getting that first blood is obviously a big benefit for him, but he's having a really good time in this lane as well. Of course, just getting a lot of that extra stack gold farm as well. Uh, on the Shadow Demon is going to be really effective because this is the sort of game where you want a Blink Dagger, you want an Aether Lens, you want a Aghanim Shard for yourself as well as... Ooh, looks like you still have the Salve cancelled on the top side. But he's doing a fairly good job of just keeping this a 1v1 between Killer and Andy. That's exactly what he wants. Meanwhile, mid lane, we do have our first rotation coming out of Mercy. Well, Kay's going to be pretty cautious of his positioning, but looks like Mercy is going to reveal himself, so... The first movement's not going to be able to pay off. They do look like they're pretty okay with leaving CSJ alone at the moment, considering the positioning of this bottom Kree wave. Mm -hmm. And he's been really good with his micro so far as well, just constantly denying his own Eidolons whenever uh, Run Fudao has been able to try and move forward and use some of those right clicks, because the Faceless Void's going to do absolutely nothing against those Eidolons. Mid lane, small KK. 
Can he actually turn it back around? Stun's going to be off the mark, and as a result of that, that'll cost him his own life. Butterfly Effect is able to chase him down, so a nice kill for the Death Prophet. Meanwhile, top lane as well, Cloud. They'll find their second kill in a span of a couple of seconds. Renfu's going to try and get some revenge. The leap sets up perfectly for the point blink arrow. So the Miran is going to be able to snag the kill and might even get the D ward as well. Man, Renfu has done so much with this rotation. He took a water rune, he killed a courier with a magic stick and an uh, uh, observer ward on it, and he gets the, uh, the D ward as well. So really nice movement coming through. It's a little bit late just to be able to protect small KK, but you'd still be fairly happy with that considering that your uh, Enigma is continuing to farm on this bottom side. Again, for Enigma, it's more about the experience as opposed to that full lane domination. So we'll see if Ranfu Dao with this movement back towards the bottom side is going to be able to do anything to stop it because he's a little bit forward here on CSJ. I wonder if they look to get aggressive when the Eidolons expire. Um, but you see CSJ starting to position a little bit more cautiously. Top lane, Starif and Killer are going out at the moment, and well, Starif with the combination of Andy's damage, it's enough to get a pretty big kill on the Killer. Eren should get a return kill nonetheless, though. So, you spoke about earlier the importance of like a Shadow, Fe oh, sorry, Shadow Demon being able to find those uh, kind of defensive items to, to help with his positioning and team fights. And well, that solo experience is, is going to be really nice for him as well because he could maybe play the dead lane to help get some of those extra items. Yep. Is able to steal away a bounty rune as well. He knows that he can't really go into this lane, but they had had to use a lot of resources to be able to kill Killer. So it looks like he might be trying to protect this uh, power rune, realizing how important it is to deny that away from a Death Prophet, especially if it's something like that Haste or an Arcane rune. Uh, so he'll look to protect the top hand side and look at even the supports on the bottom side really just wanting anything to be able to go their way it's just a regen probably not the exact one the butterfly effect was wanting but you never say no to a power rune at this stage no without a doubt you're always going to take whatever you can get very interesting as well with the item build so far from butterfly effect actually has an arcane boots queued up even though he has the kind of Enigma in the offlane, so maybe Enigma is not going to look to go into the Greaves because the moment CSJ has the hood. So we, we've seen Setsu kind of from his uh, mid Death Prophet. It's been like the. We've seen uh, Boots of Travel sometimes, even the Treads, like the Witchblade is even being queued up. So it's going to be interesting to see. But we've got our first Exo pop down bottom. So I don't know if there's much Poke can do to defend this. Yeah, I mean, Small KKK is looking to try and shove out that mid lane. Uh, so that he could potentially make a rotation towards bottom, but he's running a little bit low on mana, so I'm not sure if he wants to commit this one. It's just going to be a slow siege from Cloud. Well, they will might be forced to try to commit their hand pretty shortly with small KK showing up down bottom, so... In the end, they'll get a decent chunk of damage onto the tower. Only 400 health standing, so you'd probably be pretty happy with that first Exo. Meanwhile, you've got Andy, who's pretty content with just playing into the Broodmother at the moment, and Starf was able to soak some of the experiences mid as well. Yeah, I think that's all you really want out of the first Exo, right, is to get the tower low enough. Like, uh, death times are still incredibly low, but you're about to hit level 6 on the Enigma, right? So it's just going to be a kill or the threat of the black hole, especially if Tiny looks to play around there, that you get a kill, you're going to take this tower without needing that Exo for the second time. Once again, though, Poke looking to protect these power runes as much as possible, or at least... Uh, no, actually, both sides, they're looking to commit someone onto to ensure that small KK is able to pick that one up. And well, it's actually gonna be the top side and an invis rune. Again, not the greatest for this stage. And the arrow is actually just off the mark. Invisibility. They were gonna keep chasing. Combo. All right. Well, they might even look to try and connect with Killer. They did shove Andy back out of the lane. Only one point in the Diabolic Edict though. So small KK is gonna be able to get a Corio. And we've got the rest of the support starting to move to top as well. So. What's the call from Cloud? Do you feel like they can defend this tower if they bring more members? Probably not, to be honest. I mean, maybe they're just feeling that the Broodmother is a little low on mana, so he's not actually going to have too much of that spawn spidlings going on. Staref might just be giving up his life here to force them to commit onto him as opposed to the tower. At least before he goes down, he was able to get a majority of the spiderlings. Yeah. So I'm not 
sure if he bought out as the arcane boots queued up. So doesn't really have any small item that he's looking to pick up. But meanwhile, bottom lane. CSJ has already been able to find the tower. Butterfly Effect has been able to get a decent chunk of damage in the T1 mid as well. So even yep. though they will lose their tower top, we see Cloud getting a decent uh, amount out of the map as well. Will they though? I wonder if he's just going to TP back towards the top side with full mana and now try and deal with this uh, this Broodmother push. Because again, he doesn't have a lot of mana to play with, but instead it looks like they want to commit onto this mid lane with the Exo up for the second time. Oh, nice banishment. And the arrow onto Butterfly Effect as well. Let's see how tanky Small KK is truly going to be. And at well, this stage of the game, it's not enough. And now Butterfly Effect, he look to charge on over towards Eren. There's nothing they can do to hold back the Death Prophet. Butterfly Effect, great use of that second exorcism. Mm -hmm. They've been considering about chasing down Ren Fu, but they won't have a way to control the Murano. I don't think they actually had a look at if there were any stacks built up inside of the Ancients area, but that certainly is going to be a possibility. And it's got to really ramp up the priority for small KK to be able to pick that one up there. He wants to push out this midway first and then really wouldn't be surprised to see him make that movement back there because you can't lose that. This is your, I was about to say comeback potential, but you just need it to be as far ahead of this uh, cloud lineup as possible because that is the only damage essentially that you've got going into the chronosphere when it eventually does come out. And we even see they're looking to itemize to mitigate a lot of the Leshrax damage. Mm -hmm. Like with this hood, uh, I'd have to imagine it's going to be pipe very shortly here for CSJ. Uh, they don't really have a Mage Slayer Builder, which is a little unfortunate. We've seen that's also been a great way to be able to mitigate a lot of the Leshrax damage. So they'll be pretty reliant on just maybe the BKBs and, and that pipe towards the mid stage of this game. Who knows? I mean, Andy might look to go for it eventually, right? It builds into the Bloodthorn. It's going to be good at forcing out BKBs pretty early on into the piece. But I, I do feel like Andy has probably a little bit higher priorities to come through like you're a morphling mm. you want to have that uh, manta style you want that bkb you want ags you want scotty oh, look at this really smoke effective. on first going to try and drop the chrono they weren't able to find the attribute ship but the arrow gets tanked it's not enough or is it andy stays alive thanks to the okay, solar okay. guardian now all of cloud they've shown up to take the team fight what a defensive play. Mercy was able to tank the arrow. It gave them enough time for the boys to come and the Solar Guardian to keep Andy alive. That was just beautiful out of the supports. I mean, you and, he, you and me were chatting during the draft phase. I was all on the cloud train just because I feel like they have the answers to 90% of what poke are going to be throwing at them. And we just saw one of those instances, right? You drop the Chronosphere, you don't have overwhelming damage going into it. It is off the back of a really nice play by Mercy to be able to tank up that arrow and still not die. Uh, but yeah, not even needing the, the mechanism for that one there. Just the Solar Guardian coming in onto the Chronosphere feels like a direct counter to me. And I already reeled off all of the different items that Morphling could look to purchase to be a, a really big counter towards this Faceless Void. Which course, it does swing both ways though, doesn't it? Like if he's able to get that Chronosphere before the attribute shift and they do get a good amount of farm onto this Lesh, then could be a different story. Yeah, that it could be indeed. Eren's able to get the banishment before Butterfly Feck was in range for that toss back, so it won't get an easy kill onto the Shadow Demon. Both sides have pretty good vision inside the jungle, so I don't think anything's going to be able to come out of this. We'll see if who's able to kind of scout out the position of the wards. So my main issue with this, other the other main issue I have, is that in order to kill basically anyone of, like, serious significance is that I think they'll need the Chrono, right? Because you're going up against a, a Death Prophet who's now got the mech and is very close to mm. the Greaves. You're going up against an Enigma who's got the hood and almost has the pipe. And a Dawnbreaker has finished the Holy Locket now and he's going into the Aghanim Scepter, oh, wow. right? So if, if anyone just... Who do you kill first is my main question here. Like, do, is it the Morphling that you try and catch out on his own and think that you can actually look to burst through the uh, even the heal coming through from the Dawnbreaker, but again without the that setup coming through from the Chrono. Butterfly Effect's actually taking a lot of damage from the spiders. Holy! What's the pop? The mech was down to about a third health just off the back of that. But once you kind of just ran out a bunch of spiders here from Killer, so I'm not going to see that attempt for a little bit of time. Uh, I, I, I think. 
gonna go for an aggressive move right now because he's got the arcane rune popped and exorcisms at the ready Grease flying out to him now solar guardian everything's up for them at the moment so seems like that was what they wanted to do but some good spamming nope so they still go for the smoke there it's not under any sort of vision either but will they be able to pop the exo before that arcane rune expires and well, can they catch someone they might see small kk farming here not an easy kill being on the low ground. Mercy's gonna look for the toss back, maybe setting up for the black hole. And not requiring the damage at the moment because Butterfly Effect is nearby. And he's got a haste rune to activate as well to try and charge down another, but Killer's already been able to evacuate from the neighborhood, so it would just be a kill, but a pretty big kill. Being able to slow down this Bloodstone timing here from the Lesh. Oh, for sure. I mean, he is such a big portion of that, that push, like you said, no Mage Slayer builder, so if you could just look to lessen the uh, the impact that he's able to have early on by killing him multiple times, that's going to be a big win for you. And, you know, the Scardi is going to mitigate that somewhat, but Andy's still a fair ways away from being able to pick that one up. They do see him farming underneath this Observer Ward, yeah. though. Look at, look at uh, Longfair on the bottom side. I think they really want get, to get this kill with the... Uh, Solar Guardian being on cooldown. They're just waiting for the arrow to be in a good position, but I don't know if you've got the damage for this. No, he wasn't able to find the attribute Ooh. shift. Lonfer beautifully done. Just enough damage. The calculations, oh, they were on the mark there from Poke, so that kill is able to give them enough space across the map. Small KK off the back of the Ancient stack was able to pick up his Bloodstone now. And I wonder if we're going to start to see the ball rolling here for Poke, because one big concern I have with them is that their team fight is just far in, in, sorry, inferior to the, the boys on Cloud. you got the Exo, the Black Hole, the Solar Guardian. Uh, I'm concerned that their lineup really revolves around kind of just the, the pickup potential across the map as we're going to see Ren for... Well, he'll be caught out inside the river, so... I got a nice little freebie. Unfortunately, they weren't able to leave the rune for Butterfly Effect. Eh, it is what it is. I mean, it's very important that they got that kill though onto the Morphling, right? Even just the Marana, I was worried that with that big creep wave, they wouldn't have been able to land the arrow, but turns out the burst damage coming through from the Star Storm was more important to be able to land in onto that, uh, that Morphling. Butterfly effect though, he's got a pretty juicy creep wave on this bottom side. You can tell he doesn't want to use the Exo until he's level 12, and right now he's just trying to force out a Glyph so that that push is even more impactful. And on Ferb, they're just gonna Utilize the perfect chain control. There we go. An avalanche, the silence follow up, and the toss at the Aggressive last second glyph. to make sure there was absolutely no opportunity for him to be able to get away. And can they get high ground gonna... off of this? I know it's early, and they probably won't. But I mean, you don't have Chrono. You have a big creep web on the bottom side with a fresh Exo two popped black oh, hole. They're looking for mid instead. Okay. Solar Guardian. As soon as the banishment expires, so they'll get the stun. And They'll small take KK, it. unfortunately, is not going to be able to heal back up off the, the Bloodstone active. They're looking for the wraparound as well, CSJ. He's got the Black Hole already, but it, it looks like they won't even require it. Ranfu's completely out of leap charge. as a toss back into the silence once again. His Butterfly Effect is up to a killing spree, and we just saw how active they were across the map. You get the kill down bottom, claim the tier 2, then instantly they look to mid to try and stop that push that was going on from Poke. It was the push going on from Poke, but more importantly, it was the push without Killer. And I think that's the big thing that led them to not getting anything in exchange for that Tier 2 and the Faceless Void dying, right? We've seen that be the mark of the superior teams in that they're just a couple of seconds faster than others. You know, the Broodmother ended up showing up a tiny bit late, wasn't even able to get the mech off onto the, uh, the Lashrak, which might have been enough to be able to let that Bloodstone really go to work. And I wonder what the emotions are right now for Poke in this game. Like, I don't think their net worth lead really tells the, the tale of how this game is kind of situated right now. I, I'm very concerned for how this lineup is going to be able to perform as the game continues to go on. And, and we've got to keep in mind, like, these are best of ones, Zeno. They're mm -hmm. mentally taxing, and you don't have that second game to potentially you know, make oh. some... This is the move that they want. They're going for a smoke. They've got the Chrono available. Fresh Maelstrom picked up as well. 
They want to be able to find a high priority target and actually get a tower of their own. I mean, Mercy doesn't feel like the greatest one to be able to commit all of this onto, and what a great avalanche. They're actually going to be able to protect him as well. Solar Guardian up in seven seconds. I wonder if they're just saying, look, try and bait them super deep. We could still make a turnaround. Or they might just look to push out that mid lane. All right. Tier two tower, not the worst. But we haven't even seen a black hole come out yet either. CSJ just looking to keep the threat of that one available. Like we were talking about before, Cloud with the overwhelming team fight superiority. You got Mercy's blink now as well, just completed. So a little bit later, because he did go for the phase boots and the wind lace, but they're going to have, I mean, he's had a lot of impact already without the blink, two, one and seven involved of nine out of the 12 kills here for the tiny. Well, we're going to see that start to skyrocket now with his kind of initiation tool is Lunfer might be the target. They've got a great one on the high ground to scout up the backline support. Good timing. They'll get the toss before the banishment. So he's still going to be chucked inside the middle. But the Glimmer Cape will enable the time walk away. He's now small KK. He's going to look to enter the fight. They'll be able to run down the tiny as the rest of the cloud will try and back off towards the east. That was a big save coming through by Aaron. If he's not able to get that disruption off, they probably get that full combination through onto the Faceless Void. You take him out. You don't have the damage to be able to run down the tiny. But you didn't really pop anything super significant, right? Yes, it was the Blink Dagger reveal on the tiny, but... No ultimates used, just an Avatos combo. And it was uh, still Morphling able to spend a little bit more time in, uh, farming on the bottom side. And well, he's already halfway towards that Aghanim Scepter. Well, that's scary because Lonfer is not close at all in regards to how he's going to be able to address this. We've seen the Lincolns, we've seen the Moonshard. It's going to be a big window where Andy's got the scepter to play with without a kind of response from the Faceless Void as well. We're seeing Team Cloud. They're trying to get aggressive with their own smoke. Mercy and Butterfly <laughs> Effect trying to connect down to bottom. Ooh. Mercy gets a jump, but great Aaron reactions again. from Aaron. That quick blink away, and they will not be able to catch up to Ran Fu. So maybe this leaves Star for a little bit vulnerable top. They will get one TP in. It's actually going to be the Faceless Void on top of the outpost, but... No one else is close enough to be able to cancel the escape. And this is the thing, right? It's a Dawnbreaker. He's got that level two ultimate now available. So I wonder if they're just going to try and shove in this middle lane, go for a big wraparound. They've still got this Observer Ward that Eren is standing on top of. He is under the cover of Invis right now, but oh, they actually look to be getting a kill onto this Tiny here. Oh, oh he, he got the blink instead. away. A little bit too late here with the arrow. That's the prime They'll target you want. the easy toss back onto Eren. Purge is still going to be out to Butterfly Effect. Controlled for the moment and Lonfer finds an angle for the Chronosphere for the Solar Guardian. Just repairing all of the initial damage, but it sets up for the double star and a small KK. They're going to be cautious though. The Black Hole dropped the middle. The BKB protecting him. Small KK, he's out of mana though. Is it going to have too many resources to potentially tear on the team fight back around? The Grease will come into play. Can he stay alive long enough for the Bloodstone to come back up? And that's not the case, but off the back of the buybacks, Poke, they're looking to turn this one around, but simultaneously, Andy just having a completely free fight, waveforming over the tree line without a care in the world. But it looks like the control is the one thing in question. There's Poke. They're going to be able to reset the position. Oof. Butterfly effect almost going down, but... Oh, not the idle odds. Not, thanks to the, not the idle odds. Oh, run away, Aaron. <laughs> Oh, that's a dieback. That is pretty significant. Just not having that that save, not having that setup. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there we go. Or CSJ bullying Aaron's charity a bit. I mean, you, you couldn't have asked for much more from Aaron up until that point, right? He feels like it was really important for them to be able to potentially get that turnaround happening, but you know, just one time where he's slightly out of position. And again, it's off the back of that Observer War that they placed inside of the Ancient Camp area. Big props to Star for being able to place that one down previously. You can just no. see, they're lacking in stuns. They're lacking yeah. in save outside of the, uh, the Shadow Demon Q, which he was in the grave. Doesn't feel that great, does it? Top lane, back live. They're gonna see Faceless Void under the lane. Andy and Mercy together, 1400 health for the Faceless Void. Let's see if it's going to be enough damage coming out from the boys on die to blow him up. And with the help of the Solar Guardian, it will indeed be. Now CSJ, well, they're going to be cautious though, because actually the boys on Radiant, 
They feel like they're strong enough to take a team fight down their carry. This is just the fight. Lost Track's going to look to enter the fight. Easy kill on to start, but like you said, that is just the position five. They need to get more out of this. They're going to try and attempt it with a smoke. And he's not an easy man to bring down at all, and, and it's actually going to enable them to jump the back lane. They weren't protecting Mercy. He was able to find oh. at least a banishment off for the last second with a turnaround onto Andy. Waveform still on cooldown for the moment, up in a couple of seconds. Andy, he can use this one to reset his positioning. And now with Butterfly Effect showing up, they need to respect the Death Prophet. Mercy's going to be Blood back in with a combination to set up for the splitter from Andy's Replicate. And our Cloud, do they want to pursue on for more? Looks like they will respect the Faceless Void respawn and back off well and truly happy with what they've claimed. Yeah, not wanting to give up this Roshan for free. Yeah, that could be the thing that brings them back into the game. I mean, we know good answers to the likes of the Chronosphere or the Black Hole is that Aegis the Immortals. So that is a really high priority for both of these teams. And yeah, like we were saying, Andy's got the Aghanim Scepter now, right? Didn't even need to go into the Faceless Void that time around. Happy enough to be able to steal away a lot of that uh, spell amplification from the Lashrak. I mean, that's kind of a pseudo Mage Slayer. Interesting. Hmm. So I would imagine that it's going to be a Scardi coming through for Andy next, just to preventing a little bit more of that Bloodstone heal from coming through. No real other heals on the team just yet. Of course, Marana has the casual headdress, but hasn't been able to do much else in terms of being able to scale into this later stage of the game. You've got the Greaves for sure, but it just doesn't feel quite as strong. Yeah, and we really haven't seen this SD Marana combo have a whole lot of value in, in this game. Something that you probably hoping to, to get a little bit more out of for, for Poke, but we'll see if they're going to be able to read the smoke and it's not the case. Mercy was exactly where the Shadow Demon was with the poisons from the high ground. So look at the jump and that pick off probably is enough for them to look to walk into the pit. Was playing a... Uh a pub last night and uh, it felt oh. like I was priority number one every single time despite being a support and uh, it, it really feels like that is exactly what Eren is experiencing right uh, now. Ah, Lonfer? Oh no, Lonfer just caught out on the high ground. No oh, hesitation, CSJ hasn't really found too many opportunities for the black hole but a face that's avoided alone like that is more than happy to try and commit the ultimate and look to now go back into Roche. Yeah. I mean, again, without Shadow Demon there, there isn't really any save without the Lashrak trying to pump in a little bit of damage going the other way. Oh, Mercy as well. Strong. And, yeah. Just the vision game. That's what it is right now. The vision that Cloud's playing with just enabling Mercy to find the jump. And now you've got multiple heroes to be able to follow up on this tiny initiation. And you've got something to enable Andy to play a little bit more aggressively towards the front lines. He now has that uh, Aegis the Mold to be able to play around with, and it's not like the other cores are bad at pushing either. You've, of course, got a Death Prophet with Exo just about to be off cooldown in a minute and a half, and then level three on that one will be coming through pretty shortly as well, so they're looking for more. They're playing once again well, around all this vision. Yeah. Butterfly Fix starts a little bit too early before Mercy was able to follow up. So it looks like the carrier poke will be able to reset their position, but it's going to shove them at least out of the triangle. You see all the lanes are starting to get pushed in as well. So this next couple of minutes, it's not going to be easy for poke to, to kind of manage the map. It's not. And uh, unfortunately for Longfair, it was nighttime then as well. So he's actually was playing underneath two observer wards and he had a sentry that covered both of them, but just didn't see either of them on his way through. So. Looks like uh, Team Cloud are still going to be able to play around that sort of area. Mercy's just looking for those individual pickoffs and ends up placing an Observe Ward at the exact same time that uh, Run Fu Dao is able to place down his sentry. So at least they're not going to find any quick pickoffs onto any high priority targets, but you've still got multiple tier two towers now that are sitting on lower than full HP with no glyph to be able to protect them. You're just hoping that small KK is able to find enough farm across the map to work towards the Shivas. I mean, he's doing a really good job at being able to put himself on the enemy side. I hope he didn't run. Oh, actually. Plus back. They found Killer. And let's see if the Broodmother's going to be able to juke through the tree line. Your Scepter will hold it down for the moment. 
giving Mercy enough time for the abilities to come back off cooldown. Killers really being a nuisance, and even with the Moonlight Shadow, they're in fact lacking the detection, so that's okay. some time wasted. You see Lonfer might be able to take a T1 tower down bottom, still small KK, almost has enough gold for his Sheevers now, so... Okay. Oh, you've got to get out of here, Killer. You were just able to escape. Looks like they're not all that concerned, though. Again, the glyph was used previously for the tier two towers, which means that it's not going to be available for this level three exo to start pumping in damage onto the tier threes. Star Mercy. as well has the Aghanims. Um, that's a big jump, but he doesn't get the toss back onto the Shadow Demon. Will now be forced to toss the Brood instead, so Mercy is going to go down. And off the back of that cloud, they probably don't feel safe with now continuing on this siege. I'll be honest, I'm surprised that they didn't continue to commit on that one. They still had a good duration left on the Exo. They had the Blink Black Hole available, and they had the Aghanim's uh, Dawnbreaker ulti up as well. So maybe just really valuing the impact that Mercy is going to be able to provide with that uh, toss back onto, again, Shadow Demon is priority number one. He is such a big component of not only the save potential, but also damage mitigation from just being able to slow down the uh, the Death Prophet from running at you with that Demonic Purge, prevents the Yule Scepters, like we were saying, on the Tiny, and even just the, a little bit of the damage coming through as well, right? We saw in that previous fight in mid lane, feels like about 10 or so minutes ago, he was able to cast the Disruption in onto the Morphling and do a good amount of damage just through the illusions that spawned from it. <laughs> and saw this he's so close to Scardi. Still minting it a bit left on the Aegis, so wonder if with that level 20, they're feeling super confident to be able to move forward. I don't know if they need the Exo, to be honest. Like, it's it's a luxury at this stage. Yep. I'm honestly quite surprised that this net worth lead is only 5k. Middle tower is under attack. Hmm. I mean, Killer's been playing very far out on the map, kind of doing what he needs to. He's only died the once on the Broodmother, which against this sort of lineup is... Uh, Lonfer? Mercy's been able to catch him out of the tree line and CSJ, he's just going to drop the black hole. So Lonfer on his kind of split pushing shenanigans. Oh, and he just bought the BKB as well, so no buyback. They're trying to beeline to mid, but doesn't seem like Andy's too worried. In fact, considering about we falling onto the high ground. Seconds. And they're not going to have too long to work with this second life. They'd love to get a little bit of He's extra damage into well. the tier 3 tower, but yeah, with that Scardy, we see all the bonus stats that he can play with. They're actually even going to commit. I mean, they're 20 seconds without the Void. Oh, they're trying to find the SD again, and look at that. As soon as he reveals, even for a split second on the map, they look to chase him down. This is how important they're Aaron was. They're going to go on the arrow, they might. Okay. All right, small KK is able to jump in. They now, Butterfly damage, Effect though. might be in some trouble as well. Doesn't have any Spirit Siphon charges left, so Cloud, they need to look to retreat. Can they get this arrow, arrow. onto Andy? Ooh. Oh, nice sidestep. Not an easy spot to be able to avoid the arrow, but found a position that he will not get clipped and Andy's going to be able to back on out. So in the end, you just lose the tiny for that. The high ground, they don't get a lot out of it. I mean, we see some damage in the range barracks up top, but all things considering, you'd, you'd have to be pretty happy for Poke with how they're able to stall that push. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I feel like Cloud might be playing a little bit timid and to be honest, it's understandable, right? Best of ones, a single loss puts you really behind the eight ball where you know, a, a single win essentially forces tiebreakers to go around again at the absolute minimum. So I can understand a little bit of their hesitation, but there comes a point where you have to realize how far in reality that you're ahead. Radiant are scanning. Oh, obviously, Poke, they're going to look to try and make their own play. Lanes are in a pretty good position for this. Not going to be easy for Cloud to read. It is a five-man smoke, though, so no one is showing on the map. Mm -hmm. So thanks to this Cloud, they're going to look to reposition themselves back to the safety of their high ground. You see Observer, Sentry drop from the cliff, and Mercy is going to act as that kind of smoke block. Yeah. Then that information to be able to react as soon as Poke reveal themselves. And no one's going to be killer to show first in the lane, and I'll see the outpost getting claimed shortly as well. So Cloud will be able to dodge this smoke.
This is the advantage of playing with heroes like the Enigma, like the Naga Siren, for example, is that you're able to keep those lanes shoved out, at least have to consider, well, what's the lane situation at right now? while you're going for those four or five man smokes, right? It reveals a lot of information when no one is revealing on the map and well, just those little illusions or uh, Eidolons look to prevent a lot of that as well. They might be able to catch out Killer here if Mercy's on point with his blink toss back into Aaron's all pretty the boys. Close. Let's see if the banishment's gonna be enough to keep him alive, but the damage just comes out at such a rapid rate that even Eren wasn't able to get close enough to offer some protection. It's a full minute now with no Broodmother. He's going into a nullify for himself, just really wanting to get through a lot of this uh, save potential that they've got through things like the pipe, like the Yule Scepter, for example. They're just going to push it. They don't want him to be able to have that money to be able to pick up that next big item. Again, no Glyph available this time around. It was a smart purchase, of course, of the Shard. Just trying to force out some big cooldowns right now on Cloud. Mostly the BKB is what they're looking for. Okay, he's actually going to jump in. They look to start at the back of the last track, but the Solar Guardian used. So they won't have this for the Chronosphere now. Meanwhile, the Chrono actually does get used solo into the Morphling, but he's he was able to get off. the attribute shift before the bubble. So Anti's more than okay. And up with the Black Hole, solely used thanks to the last track. They're going to try and bring him down, and they'll do just that. The main damage source on Poke, not available now for this defense. He doesn't have a buyback as well, so it's going to be a lot of objective damage inside the base of Poke. In a faceless void is one of those heroes that you absolutely love to use the Aghanim Scepter on to, not only just for the additional amount of movement that it provides, although he's getting a little low here. They commit for him. Right. Actually able to blow him up there. I thought the attribute shift was going to be enough to keep him alive, but not the case. That's kind of messy in a way. I mean, the Lesh uh, dead for 40, no buyback, no chrono. Definitely could have gotten more objectives out of that, but unfortunately for Cloud, as a result of the Morphling going down, they're going to be forced to retreat away from the siege. I mean, they're doing a lot of what they should, right? They're trying to poke. They're trying to say... <laughs> fitting, right? But uh, they're going in with the uh, reverse time walk, just trying to bait out a few of these things like the pipe, like the greaves, like the BKBs, but Cloud aren't biting. They're just saying, you know what? You need to fully commit before we go in to pop anything. We saw, though, they are at the very end of the fight when they didn't have a lot of those cooldowns available. They were Ooh. able to take out a hero like that Morphling and well, they're going to go straight into the Roche pit. Mercy will oh, get the this start would be a big pick. A toss over closer to CSJ, but the Black Hole's not at the ready. They should be able to bring Roche down before the Morphling's alive. I don't think there's much Cloud can do to kind of stop this. No, even Exo's got 15 seconds left on it. It needs to all be right. all on the back of Mercy. And that one death, not only... Oh, Mercy? Great double avalanche. They're going to put all their attention to try and shut away the Shadow Demon's impact in the team fight. Maybe this will be able to enable Butterfly Effect, but as soon as the Exorcism is activated, Poke going to try and retreat with a leap up in a couple of seconds. Ramfu will be okay. And the rest of Cloud. Do they just look to walk it down mid? They could go bottom. They got a very healthy wave there and... Well, let's see what the positioning is like from Mercy. Can he get another Avatos combo off onto him while they've still got this Exo running? Looks like he's trying to stay inside the fog for as long as possible. Just playing on the outskirts there. Perfect positioning so that the high ground tower doesn't see him. But they're still going to back off on Poke just to be able to get away from it. So, I mean, that that's exactly what we were wanting, right? They got the Poke. They got the kill onto a pretty high priority target. They got the Aegis and they used the Exorcism on the Death Prophet. So it's going to give them that little bit more time to be able to pick up that next item. For them, it's also going to be a Scardi. And understandable, right? Going up against the Morphling, going up against the Solar Guardian, the Greaves coming through, Spirit Siphon. It's a very effective item for Lomfer to be able to pick up for his team. Ooh, Timeless Relic too. I put a Spell Prism going the other way. Oh, is it a Lonfair instead of Lonfer? Lonfair. Lonfair, okay, are we gonna say the full name now or are we, are we waiting sure, for the Lonfer, five minutes? Sure, Lonfair, c'est les autres. Oh, God. Hell is other people and, uh, well, oh. 
he hasn't really been the main target a lot of these times. Yeah, he's died the five times, but I'm sure that's what Aaron's really thinking. He started this game 3-3-3, three, three, and three, and ever since then he's died six times just because he's been priority number one. You feel for the Ooh. guy, but now he's got a Glimmer Cape to be able to play around with. He's had a Blink Dagger for quite some time just so that he could play super far back away from the boys and get that Blink save off or, or get that Blink Demonic Purge. I wonder if he looks to commit forward for this Aghanim Shard, though, or if they're going to look to value the buyback over that. Just gonna go for a smoke instead. Alright, what can they get out of this here for Poke? Smoke Maybe a, a big item reveal is gonna be the Hex on Killer. He looked to kind of deter away from the Nullifier that he had queued up for quite some time, so... I wonder if they're gonna bait small KK on this bottom side. Like, this tower's really low. Will they be able to get any TPs down here? Doesn't like anyone wanted to respond to that with the smoke coming through, and they're actually going to look to make something happen in response to it. The vision is going to be a slight advantage. Mercy is going to run into Aaron. It's a big tide if they're able to bring him down. They'll drop the ward as well. Look at the priority they're trying to put on the Shadow Demon. Mercy's able to find the yours. Holding him into place for the moment, so SD's going to be okay off to the left side. Throw the Hex. Andy, protected with the Solar Guardian. They're still going to lay down the Chrono, but look at the Solar Guardian keeping him healthy enough. And now CSJ, that's the black hole they've been waiting for, but the Banishment keeps Small KK alive for the moment. Void's going to look to try and set himself off off the back of round two, but they won't have a Lesh for this team fight. As now Andy, he can look to time walk over the top. They're lacking the control to deal with the Broodmother. He's even going to waveform further and further, chasing down Lonfair. But a buyback will come out of small KK. They've got to be cautious. Even Lonfair is going to buy back as well. So Cloud, you need to cut your losses, but you need some way to protect Andy. Mercy's going to try and do whatever he can, but there was not even a use of an avalanche. Andy goes down. Now Mercy might be in trouble as well. They're even going to smoke to just try and close the distance that they much faster. A blinks up in a couple of seconds, but the time dilation stops it sure. Tiny will be chased down under the T2 tower and poke. It was looking like a rough start to the team fight. It was an incredible black hole, but off the back of multiple buybacks, they will come out on top. You gotta get something out of this though, and that's why CSJ's positioning is so good on this bottom side. He realizes the team fight not going well for him, but the lanes all pretty heavily shoved in. So they're just trying to cut them for right now. But even with all of those buybacks being expended, they're not going to get much more than just a few kills and a little bit of net worth. Well, honestly, even the net worth is probably going to be pretty even, right? Because of all those buybacks that had to be expended. Look at the damage coming through from the Lashrak. Just in a singular team fight, yep. 12k. He just ran completely out of steam by the end of it, though. Wow. I mean, what a crazy fight. Again, we see them jumping on Andy. I was surprised at how much damage was actually coming out of the Chrono, even with that Solar Guardian nearby. But I mean, that's really the turning point. I thought it was going to be for CSJ with the Black Hole. You know, that was they a refresher orb on the Dawnbreaker as well. So you got two lots of that Aghanim's uh, plus the Holy Locket Solar Guardian. That just shows how overwhelming the damage can be from this Lashrak. And, well, Lesh survived through the vast majority of that, so he's level 25. He's got all of those additional Diabolic Edict explosions. They weren't lucky enough to be able to convert that one team fight into a push. But if they get another team fight and it's a similar sort of situation, there's extra explosions coming through from it is going to benefit them in a huge way. And even... Off the back of the buyback from small KK, he's still been able to find enough gold to complete the hex. So you've got double hex now, which could prove to be a really big issue for Andy. This attribute shift with the Aghanim Shard, you're unable to use it. So there's definitely a potential for him to be blown up four to zero if a double hex does come out. Yeah, so I wonder if the option is, like, he's going into a Daedalus, which I feel like they're putting a lot of faith into Mercy at the moment. He's been doing a really good job getting a lot of these, you know, tosses yeah. to be able to start these fights. It's just a matter of... But I, actually, I, I, I do appreciate that because they don't have buybacks, right? We know that they don't have buybacks now. So they're just saying, look, we feel like the Morphling is going to be able to survive. He can go a little bit more into the damage, and we're going to bank on Tiny to be able to find that initial pickoff. Because what happened to us in that pass fight, they're not going to be able to do it again. We've still got the net worth advantage. We've still got a little bit of an experience advantage going our way. 
is under attack. And importantly, you have this threat of the double black hole now. Yeah. And we saw like... And he's nearly 25 that, as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's going to be even more damage getting pumped through from the Morphling inside the black hole. But we saw what happened last fight. Like even though it did go well for Poke, they weren't able to address the black hole from CSJ and they will mm -hmm. not through the entirety of this game. So you have one more successful team fight and th this game could just be over with the diebacks on both the Void and the Lesh. So... You can just solo black hole one, refresh and, and solo black hole the other corn. We could just be, this could be GG in five minutes. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm hopping on about it a little bit, but Aaron's positioning is so important right now. He's looking to try and be in the place to be Look able to pop some Mercy. smokes. Oh, and they see Lanfu. Butterfly Fax able to try and jump in the middle, but Aaron will protect him with the banishment. All eyes on CSJ if he's able to close the distance. It's an all out retreat from Poe. They're going to try and cancel Aaron's him. TP. And they will That's be able to do one. so. So the Shadow Demon's going to end up going down. He does have a buyback at least. Yep. And with them turning their attention over the Shadow Demon, it did enable Lonfair to be able to retreat away. So at least you weren't able to get that main priority on the Void. Small KK is trying to get their attention away from this uh, mid lane from just being able to push in. But you've got plenty of creeps for it. And yeah. All right, first X. Where's the Lesh? And he's okay. Playing with a decent chunk of health. I think he was actually able to find the attribute ship before. Killer got in range, and now they're gonna turn to the sh He just pulled back. You need to try and protect the Shadow Demon who just pulled back. Aaron continuing to get chased out of the south, but CSJ flying to Black Hole onto two. Butterfly Effect is gonna be able to follow up with the damage to waveform into the middle as well. The Morphling, he didn't go Ooh. down. The Morphling didn't die. Finds that an opportunity for the oh, corner sphere, the but the Solar Guardian. Repairs all the damage. It'll keep the Morphling alive long enough. And he's going to be able to reposition out the base. They go with an all-out retreat from Cloud. How? How does only two members die? What? Two died, but there were two buybacks coming through, right? Aaron used oh, okay. his previously <laughs> before that even started, and uh, Marana as well at the very end of things. I, I mean, it feels just like they are lacking that little bit of damage, though, doesn't it? And so that's why Ranfu Dao... Of course, the uh, extra little bit of life steal can never hurt, but the damage buff coming through from that Vlad's is going to be very important for them to pick up. But they've even been able to secure a gem for themselves as well. So Killer? maybe realizing that this Roshan is the one that they oh, need Killer's to be playing. Oh, Killer's in trouble for. now. They just picked up a double damage rune on Andy. If they can get the toss back, Killer's not going to be long for this world. Glimmer Cape actually gives him some time to reset. They're thinking about going back in. Small KK. He's starting to beeline to the neighborhood. Observe what dropped down, they'll get the jump, there's the Hex, the follow-up chain control, it's enough, they'll use another round of the Hex onto the Death Prophet, uh-oh, Cloud, crumbling under this late game pressure. Yeah, even with it, yeah, super creep secured, they're going to have a, a creep wave pushing in, but that's not the main target, with all those buybacks being expended previously, you gotta take this Roshan, Lashrak still a minute 20 left on the buyback of his, he I would assume has potentially the item slot to be able to pick it up, or they might just want to put everything in onto Longfair so that he can go for these super deep dives. I mean, I like the fact that he's gone for the Lincoln Sphere, making sure that he is not the main target. I kind of feel like Faceless, uh, sorry, the Morphling needs to do a similar sort of thing. Like he went all in on damage, but you just got to make sure you survive that initial burst. Oh, baby, is we this what I love out of the best of one? Bottom lane, Mercy. The solar guardian. Oh, the banishment. Oh, okay, Aaron. Aaron. Is he gonna go back in? They're coming. I the boys are here. Yeah, Look at Killer starting to beeline to bottom. Mercy might want a solo pick as well though. as nearby. Mercy's almost gonna be able to find the solo pick up, but the damage isn't enough. Nihilism activated and Mercy just crumbles. I thought maybe he was gonna get the proc coming through from the Stormcrafter onto the uh the Shadow Demon, why was slowly moving away, but I think it went onto the Lashrak instead. So playing with fire a little bit, especially again with that dieback being a possibility. But with this, they're looking to start hitting in onto some of these tier threes even potentially, right? You've got 
the Lashrak without the boots of travel though, so he's going to need to join in onto the rest of his team fairly shortly, especially when this Tiny isn't available, but really respecting the fact that some of these big cooldowns are back and available. That's why they went for the big move previously, right? They knew that they didn't have the Exo, they knew that they didn't have the Refresher on the Solar Guardian, and no Black Hole as well is just as significant. A race pact. Race pact, okay. Okay. What do we make of this? Mm, not the biggest fan, if I'm being honest, right? <laughs> like, you've still got a lot of your damage being output off of the back of the Death Prophet and off of the Midnight Pulse at this stage. That percentage damage is going to be huge for these team fights, especially as a lot of these heroes start to get a lot beefier. So, really, it's only like a, a morphling response. And, well, we'll, uh, we'll see how it turns out for him. Looks Very like interesting. The BKB instead of the Lincolns. So maybe again, just looking to bank off the fact that they want the superior vision. They want to be the ones making the jump because you know, BKB is not the item that you go if you want if you feel like you need to be counter initiating. Even though they've got all the tools to be able to do so. Yeah. Well, this is the first time Shadows. that Poker being able to claim the net worth lead since about. 12, 13 minutes into the game. Almost a 50-50 uh, win prob too. Yeah. Uh, crazy to be at this stage at a 50-minute stage game. We're going to see Cloud actually look to try and smoke. Playing behind Butterfly Effect at the moment. Where they are starting to move down to maybe set up on the Death Prophet inside the lane, but meanwhile towards a higher ground. Mercy is going to be off the mark. and Catches two. He can set up with the Corona Sphere. We see once again the Solar Guardian protect them inside, but the Hex is going to come out the last second. Is it enough to keep the Morphling alive? It's not. They won't have Andy in our CSJ. He's not even going to be able to use the second round of the Black Hole as the boys on Poke just instantly turn to deal with the Enigma. They will not be able to stop the TP out from Starve inside Ooh. the lane. Killer also will not be able to catch Butterfly Effect as well, but... He has Just a basher as well. Killer almost was able to catch him there. And this is a Broodmother that is a significant right clicker at this stage. Yes, you're against a lot of damage, but he's got level 25, so he's got less base attack time. He's got, of course, the insatiable hunger just for all of that life still coming through. And yeah, some of these buybacks are going to need to be expended. That was a BKB, again, not popped by the Morphling. So they didn't get the start to the team fight that they were wanting. So no buyback on Morphling for 50. You will have the Enigma up in 35. You'd That's love to try hex. and hold that buyback, but you might not be able to as a Death Prophet is caught out. Once again, the chain control, but this time Butterfly Effect is going to be able to activate the BKB, but the damage is just coming fast. I'll bring him down before he's able to play around with the Spirit Siphon. Butterfly Effect forces out his buyback instantaneously as... Uh-oh, this late game execution. Seems like Cloud just aren't up to par with Poke at the moment. Oh, certainly not. As they're actually going to place the Observer Ward a little bit too close to the uh, the true site provided by the Dire Base, but, well, they're looking to try and find a pickoff before this Morphling's alive. What can you do, CSJ? What can CSJ do but small KK? He starts to no fight buyback. onto the Enigma. Oh, he's got it now. He doesn't have a buyback. It just came and up. And now they're on Butterfly Effect as well. The Bash is raining down. Enigma? He's going to be okay for the moment. Trying Enigma? to try to get the life steal, but it's not enough. Over to Star if they go. And this defense is... Oh, okay. The, he got the buyback gold. CSJ. Can he find an opening for the Black Hole? You bet he can. On to three with Andy Need by the pump in the damage. They'll stand just strong. Expired. They'll hold the base for the moment, but they've got to be cautious. Can they continue to chase down Lon Fur? It looks like that'll be the case. The Faceless Void. Well, they're looking to buy back. Small the KK along with the Faceless Void. They made a lot of TPs to, to that outpost, but look at the top yeah. lane. The top lane's pushing in with this massive creep wave. Two siege and, well... The Faceless Void is not a need to stay all the way back at base, so some of those buybacks, I'm not sure if you're instantly going to be able to take advantage of them, especially if you see the Faceless Void back here. Wow. I mean, you could not have asked for a worse start for the Enigma and mm -hmm. then the best black hole to pretty much save this game. Yeah, I mean, he was waiting a long time with that buyback as well. It came up a couple of seconds after he died. And I was thinking, you got to save your Death Prophet, man. When's it coming? When's it coming? It never did until they just committed a little bit too far past those Tier 4 towers as they look to go for a pick off here. 
Yeah. Asar, no BKB. And, and he's gone again. The Solar Guardian, it's just not enough at this stage of the game. Andy, he got straight again. back into the middle, but an instant use of the crow for Lonfer is not messing around. That's a dieback out of Andy's Morphling. As Mercy was hoping for a toss back inside the base, but the G's are going to be called and poke. Somehow in this best of one, we'll find a way back into this game and take it in 53 minutes. Man, they were...